Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about the matches CSS selector method within Google Tag Manager. As always these little videos are brought to you by gtmtraining.com your learning resource dedicated to making you awesome at Google Tag Manager and if you want to dive deeper into today's topic you can find a extra resource under gtmtraining.com slash CSS selector. Now let's get into today's topic, which is the CSS selector method within Google Tag Manager. What am I talking about specifically? Well, when we are in a trigger menu and we open up a new trigger or we click on a existing trigger, we also have the fire on option, which is the filter for this trigger, where we can filter down on the values of certain variables. And we have here also the option to match that up with a CSS selector. So if my element is an HTML element and then we can match up this element to a given CSS selector, whatever we put into this field. Now, when would this be useful? For example, here we have an outbound link click trigger, which triggers a tag once we click on a outbound link click, for example, here, social media link. And this is all well. It works on any outbound link click here. I want to actually filter down on this, specifically on these links here in the footer. What makes them so special? Well, when we look into our developer tools by inspecting this element, we can see that they hold a special attribute in those links, which is the nofollow attribute. And this attribute just specifies that search engine bots like Google shouldn't follow this link or pass on any link juice, as you call it in SEO terms. Now, I want to filter down and only fire my event upon a link click of nofollow links. So how would I go about this? Once we click on the link, on this link, we actually see like normal, our GTM link click gets pushed into the data layer. Let's look into the data layer to see which elements can be picked up by Google Tag Manager. Unfortunately, there's not much except of the URL and this doesn't specify if it's a nofollow link or not. But we have here the GTM element, which when we look into the variable section here on the click element is an object. Unfortunately, we cannot inspect this object within the debug console. The only thing that we can do is open up our developer tools again under view developer. We'll go right into the JavaScript console here and we type in data layer. Now we looked at this last event here, which was the GTM link click on our link woo themes and we see the gtm element is a which specifies the link that we clicked on and this is actually html which is also one of the prerequisites for using the css selector method here because we need to have an html element that we run this selector against now once we go back into our element section here and look at the link again specifically, we know that the attribute of this link is rel nofollow. So probably we can write a CSS selector to identify this link to Google Tag Manager uniquely as a nofollow link. To test the CSS selector method out, we can actually use the JavaScript console and typing some JavaScript, which would resemble our CSS selector method. And one command that resembles the CSS selector method pretty closely is the command document.querySelectorAll to have a capital here. And then we can simply input our CSS selector. So in our case, if we are looking for all the elements with a certain attribute, 
we would input our attribute selector. Which would simply be those brackets where you put in the attribute name and its value that you're searching for. And it will return all the elements that have this attribute and its value, which is a clear sign that we can use this selector for our filter. So let's copy this and head over to Google Tag Manager and then redefine our filter by choosing the variable that we want to run this on, which is the click element variable and choose our matching method here the CSS selector and input our just written CSS selector. Let's save the trigger and see if our trigger works. Let's reload our page here and first of all do the negative test of clicking on Facebook or fortunately this seems to work. It hasn't fired our tag. Let's click on the event and actually look at the tag that should have been fired and see why our trigger failed. You see here the click element didn't match the CSS selector no follow. And now let's do the positive test of clicking on these links here on WordPress. Another link click and our event Google Analytics now fired because this matched the CSS selector no follow. So our little experiment worked here. This tag will now only fire upon link clicks with where the link actually holds the attribute of no follow. So I hope by now you see how this matching option can be really powerful, especially if you don't have a unique feature within your data layer to really filter down on the element that you desire to track. With the CSS selector method, you have a very powerful tool to your disposal to find the right element and match it up with your variable. Now, obviously for this method to work and for you to use it effectively, you need to know CSS and how to select elements. And if you don't know, and if you're a beginner at CSS, I can only recommend this little tutorial on the flukeout.github.io where it will take you through all the different selector methods within CSS with a little tutorial and it's interactive and it's really awesome. And that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. If you want to find out more, head over to gtmtraining.com and check out our resource guide at gtmtraining.com slash CSS selectors. I'm Julian, till next time. So now let's get started with scroll tracking within GTM. And in order to, and what we'll do in this little tutorial is implement a custom HTML tag, which will basically act as our event listener in Google Tag Manager. And when somebody, but now let's get started talking about bounce rate. So the bounce rate is often seen as this metric to evaluate landing pages. So does the traffic that hits my page actually stick around or leave the page? There's actually a little bit of a problem here with the bounce rate because the way that is defined in Google Analytics. Let's have a look. So bounce in.